Hello, everyone. It's Eric Wolf again, and welcome back for our last session of the day, which is Innovation and Authenticity in World Tourism, a case study from Italy. And before I introduce our presenter, I would like to just remind everyone, actually not remind you because you haven't heard this yet, I was going to say it earlier and I forgot, is in um, November, we are going to be talking about the uh, future of gastronomy tourism education. And that is with our Food Travel Talk TV series. So if you're interested in attending that, um, there is the link right there to attend that. And then this month, just yesterday, we had a session about authenticity in food tourism. And you can find that on our YouTube channel. Uh, and I'll post the link for that shortly. But that is a recorded Food Travel Talk TV session that we did this month as well. So if you're interested in this idea of authenticity in food tourism, then those would be for you now. On to our presenter, uh, Melanie Sara, who is a PhD researcher at the University of Macerata in Italy. And without further ado, Melanie, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much. I am very glad of being here today. And I will present you my, my research. That is a case study from Italy. But before presenting you my research, I would like to uh, just analyze some data that are the background of the research to understand why I have led the, the research on. So, uh, as we know, tourist sector is one of the most important uh, at the economic level and also for employment sectors in the economy and also is, is, it is one of the fastest growing economic sector, but, but the mass tourism that has spread from the 70s on uh, has led to negative social, environmental and economic impacts on all the, the destination more or less. But um, according to some analysis, uh, uh, the rural destinations are the less affected by the negative impacts of mass tourism. Uh, in fact, uh, on a total of 18 uh, negative impacts, uh, rural destinations have only 12 of them. Uh, the most affected dimension are economy and environment. Uh, so, of course, there is a need for sustainability. In fact, sustainable tourism uh, cannot be considered more a uh, niche tourism, but the basis for every kind of tourism activities, um, as it has been underlined by many uh, international, European, national uh, guidelines uh, and policies. Uh, so uh, sustainability is the key. Um, and for rural tourism, sustainability uh, is even more important because uh, uh, rural tourism is mm, linked to environment. And if we do not respect the environment and do not uh, protect it, we cannot have rural tourism. Uh, anyway, there is a general increase of demand for rural tourism. Um, for example, in Europe, uh, the, the overnight stays uh, in rural areas have increased uh, from 2017-2019. Uh, but uh, uh, an interesting data is that uh, the amount of overnight stays in rural areas is almost the same uh, uh, of cities in Italy. So um, this shows a need um, to, um, to relax uh, and choose overnight stays in uh, um, calm places where people can also um, get in touch with the local community. Um, so, um, as I told you, uh, sustainability is the key, but sustainability means also diversification. And one of the way to um, diversify the uh, rural tourism offer is to combine it with gastronomic tourism. Gastronomic tourism is one of the uh, most growing uh, economic sector. In fact, in uh, 2016, 93% uh, uh, of travelers took part uh, to a new gastronomic experience while traveling. And an interesting aspect is that gastronomic tourists are, are eclectic. So uh, this means that they are interested in different activities. Moreover, uh, they, they care for sustainable consumption. Uh, they want to... Um, get uh, emotionally involved in the experience and uh, um, the, the uh, good food, food tourism strategy should also take into consideration the diversification of the offer and create sustainable supply chains. Um, moreover, the, the enogastronomic landscape uh, is crucial because the landscape is formed by uh, agricultural and farming. So um, these are the, the activities led by uh, farmhouses uh, that in this case are the, the key stakeholders, we can say. Um, so um, briefly, I would like to talk about the dairy sector. Um, Italy is one of the most important producer of um, milk in Europe. Uh, in fact, it produces uh, almost 11% of the European production and it is a high quality production, uh, the, the production of cheese. We have uh, 53 uh, geographic indications, um, 503 uh, traditional agri-food products and 60 
to slow food uh, cheese presidiums. Uh, moreover, a uh, sustainable production can contribute to the um, achievement of the uh, sustainable development goals established by Agenda 2030 uh, by the, the United Nations. Uh, and uh, here there is uh, the, the cheese tourism wheel already presented in the last presentation. Uh, so um, we can understand how uh, a cheese tourism can um, is not only linked to cheese but to many different activities and then and can create a positive impact uh, on the economy. So uh, the reform houses can have uh, uh, a social role uh, and an economic role. Uh, they they are not only seller of cheese, uh, but they they represent food safety, um, sustainability. They are the keeper of ancient know-how. They are the keeper of biodiversity. They care for the environment. So um, their role is more than an economic one. Um, my my research uh, is focused on Casifici Agricoli Open Day. Uh, Casifici Agricoli are the dairy farm houses. Uh, so um, this is an event that um, is an initiative uh, organized in Italy every year in September, uh, and uh, um, almost 80 uh, dairy farm houses are participating. Um, the 2020 has been the third edition of the event. And it consists of two days during which the farmhouses open their doors to visitors and allow them to come and see what is the everyday life of a farmhouse. So um, how milk um, is transformed into cheese, um, how animals live and so on. Um, the, the idea um, was born in, uh, in the market region from a, an agricultural entrepreneur who decided to create this event uh, to educate consumers uh, and to focus the attention on cheese in order to um, also rediscover uh, small towns and villages that characterizes Italy. Um, so creating uh, uh, some destinations of rural, gastronomic, educational, uh, but also natural tourism. Uh, so. It is a combination of many elements and the, um, um, the peculiarity is that uh, uh, the event is not held in one single place but uh, in all the farmhouses uh, uh, that participate. So uh, the dislocation is the key of the element because it's not the uh, the company that goes from to, to the consumer, but is the consumer that moves from uh, to the company. So um, they can see the company in, in its real uh, landscape. Um, differently from what happened in fairs uh, or uh, exposition and so on. Uh, so I have uh, made a questionnaire and uh, I have interviewed uh, all, all the all the companies applying for the event. Um, of course, uh, the farmhouses uh, uh, offer more than uh, than cheese. Uh, they, in many cases, they are, they are agritourism, so they have restaurants, uh, uh, bed and breakfast, and so on. Um, they organize uh, social educational activities. Uh, they are didactic farmhouses and also testing experiences. So uh, there is a willingness from the the farmhouses to um, to diversify their offer. Um, the link with the territory is strict. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, tourism, uh, the territory and dairy farmhouses represent an added value for each other uh, because the company benefits from the fame of the territory, from the networks uh, and from the other services that are offered by local actors uh, like uh, schools and universities that um, in many cases provided pro professional figures. Uh, while the farmhouse is involved uh, in the development of the territory, uh, contributes in defining the place branding uh, and also attracts uh, tourist flows in the territory. So um, by attracting tourist flows, it contributes to the place branding and then the territory can benefit from the place branding. Uh, it's like a, a circular thing. Um, so um, if um, we, I have asked uh, uh, the companies why they do participate in the Casifici Agricoli Open Day and 77% uh, uh, participate for the promotion and communication, uh, 68 uh, to exchange ideas and techniques, uh, se uh, 60 to valorize the territory, 51% to educate consumers. So uh, the valorization of the territory and education of consumers um, have a quite big percentage. Uh, moreover, uh, on those days, 60% of the farms offer guided tasting, 52% open air activities, and 49 labs related to farm activities, uh, like making cheese and so on. Um, so 
Uh, the visitors are mainly families, a quarter of visitors are families, uh, but we have also uh, cheese lovers, nature lovers, uh, family and so, uh, couples, friends and schools. Uh, unfortunately, the percentage of school is very low, as we can see, but the problem um, is uh, related to the period in which uh, the event is held, uh, because uh, it is held in the first weeks uh, of September. So not, uh, not in every region in Italy schools are opened. Um, anyway, uh, they come from uh, mainly from the same province, uh, but it is interesting to know that uh, um, the first percent comes from other countries. Uh, this means that uh, this event, uh, of course, people will not um, go, will not come to Italy only for this event. Uh, we know it, but uh, we um, we can combine this event with other offers uh, and uh, make. Mm, uh, a diversified offer that can attract uh, many people. Uh, finally, I have analyzed the benefits of Casifici Agricoli Open Day. So um, I have taken four categories that are consumers, the territory, the company and the local community. Uh, the, the score is uh, from one to five. And as we can see, the benefits to the consumers is uh, the category with the highest score, uh, mainly because uh, the, the consumers can directly meet the producers and uh, can know the territory, the process, uh, the, the production process, uh, but also get, it, uh, get educated about environment and sustainable consumption. Then we have the territory. Uh, in fact, Casepici Agricoli Open Day uh, wants to revitalize uh, internal areas, so valorize uh, small municipalities, uh, local food products and local cultures. Um, moreover, uh, the, um, the, the, the event can strengthen the local area's image. Uh, so uh, then we have the, the company. The main aspect for the benefits of the company is the motivation of the personnel and the strengthen of the company's brand, uh, as well as the visibility in local market, but also national and international market. Um, finally, we have the local community. Uh, the lowest, the, this low score can be explained by the fact that by local community, um, we have meant that uh, uh, only um, only people living in the same municipality uh, were to be meant as local community, uh, but visitors, mainly most of the visitors come from the same province and not from the same municipality. Uh, so this is why the benefits to the local community have this uh, low score. Anyway, for, of course, for them is an occasion for entertainment and socializing, uh, but also uh, to acquire uh, new skills and abilities. So uh, this year uh, has been difficult to organize the, the Open Day because of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, mainly because uh, uh, we, uh, as uh, the, the central organization, uh, cannot really know all the legislation framework uh, in, every count, in every city and region um, because the event is held uh, all around Italy. Uh, so it has been difficult for us but uh, um, it has been interesting to notice that uh, um, more or less 80 farmhouses took part to the event. Uh, the results uh, were very good. Uh, many of them uh, had more than 100 uh, visitors. And um, this can be explained by the fact that, we, um, unluckily, uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, uh, visitors are looking for uh, open air spaces. Uh, uh, they want to um, get in touch with each other with, uh, in an authentic way. Uh, they want to meet their origin, and uh, Casipici Agricoli Open Day offer, uh, offer them all these possibilities. So, uh, finally, I can say that uh, Casifici Agricoli Open Day is an innovative way uh, to move the city to rural areas uh, and discover authenticity because uh, the, our aim is not only to, um, to promote cheese uh, as a traditional food, uh, but is to um, make people understand that cheese is landscape, is the, the local territory, and uh, um, this event and events like that are also a way to, um, to avoid the depopulation uh, that unfortunately is, uh, is one of the main problems of the internal areas in Italy. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we have, I will post the, it looks like, I think I found the link to the, to your um, to the open day there. I think that's the one I posted. Um, somebody asked how many producers participate in the event? And then can you give us a little breakdown about, you, uh, you mentioned cheese and that, do you have any um, sectors that, that are, which sectors are represented, I guess? 
Okay, uh, mainly, um, of course, we uh, the only requirement to enter the event is that dairy farm houses have to produce cheese only with the milk of their animals. And this is, a, um, I can say it is a, almost a unique definition because if we consider the micro uh, dairy farm houses in the civil code or also in, at the European level, uh, there is the, uh, the limit of 51% of their milk. Uh, but for us, it's only 100% of their milk and uh, this is um, this guarantees a 100% locally produced uh, produced cheese. Uh, this year, uh, the companies were 80 uh, in Italy, uh, all over Italy. Um, unfortunately, uh, we have the we lost some companies from the from the last year. This is due to to COVID-19 pandemic. Unfortunately, because many of them had to face uh, uh, very uh, bad economic issues. So they couldn't participate. Um, so now we are uh, at our third edition, and uh, 80 companies are taking part. Uh, mainly they produce cheese, but many of them uh, they produce also like pasta, uh, bread, uh, um, and uh, like um, they they are meat producers. Uh, they make salami and so on. So um, th this is why we want to promote them because. It's not only cheese. I mean, it's around cheese, but um, it's promoting all the territory through food. Thank you. And there's a question: Is um, you see a difference between companies that present an IGP label and others? Is there something about IGP holders that makes them more attractive to the visitors or the? Mm, yeah, I mean, IGP uh, are um, better known. Their uh, their presence on the web uh, is higher uh, than uh, very small uh, farmhouses. Anyway, many of the um, farmhouses participating in the event have uh, IGP or PDOs recognition. Some of them have also the Slow Food Cheese Presidium. Uh, so, um, I mean, we do not exclude uh, other uh, other certification or other quality levels, uh, but. Um, you know, in many cases, even if there are some certification and quality labels, uh, farmhouses are, uh, are allowed to buy the milk from other uh, producers. Uh, instead, our uh, our mission is to promote the um, like uh, the the cheese made in the company with only with the milk of their animals. So uh, it's more a matter of territory. Okay, and I should say IGP labels are um, certifications of geographic origin. We don't have those in America, so it's important. Yeah, that those yeah. Are maybe not in Italy or Europe. Who might not know that? Yeah, me. We have them in Europe uh, as well as PDOs and TSGs. Yeah. Do um, are all of these? Yeah, also DOG, yeah, DOCG, DOP. Absolutely. Um, do you? Are all these producers open during the year, or some of them only open during the open house day? Uh, no, they are open all uh, throughout the year. Um, so many of them, uh, even uh, like in January or February, they organize other activities like didactic farmhouses. Um, you you can almost uh, you can go there almost during every period of the year and visit the farmhouse. Uh, but in the event, uh, uh, it's like all the dairy farmhouses participating in Italy are open to allow visitors come and see what is the everyday life of a farmhouse. Wonderful. And you gave us a great case study of the program from across uh, Italy. Is, the, is there one or two different, any of the providers that you have been to that you think give a great example that we can look at on our own and kind of use that as our own case studies for our best practices? Um, well, for this event, uh, there are many, many, many companies. Is there one or two that you've been to or you're familiar with? Just pick one or two out that you think do a great job. I think that uh, in the last edition, uh, um, Alpe Burki, the, the company Alpe Burki, uh, did a great job, as well as uh, um, Fonte Grande. These are companies participating that are really putting their efforts uh, on uh, attracting visitors and uh, educating them. Because um, um, the, the central organization only asks the companies to, um, to um, open the doors 
and make a testing. Uh, but um, then we, we also uh, suggest them to organize many activities, uh, the, the many the best, because um, like uh, some laboratories for children, for families, um, lunches, uh, dinners and so on. Uh, but it's not compulsory. Um, because the even at the from the economic point of view, uh, the the central organization has not the resources to create a unique program uh, that should be the same for everybody. So uh, they are free to organize their own uh, open day, uh, and many of them have organized uh, really nice activities. Even if in this period that unfortunately uh, was not so so nice to organize an event, but the fact that many companies had um, open air spaces at them a lot. Uh, the main yeah, I, I will write in the chat the name of the company so that. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, I know that uh, it would be a very uh, yeah great resource for some of us just like to see great examples from across the world. Mm -hmm. I'll also um, post an example from that we do here in our local area in California as far as a it's a farm trail weekend. And a lot of, in our area, a lot of them aren't open during the year. So it's kind of one of the only times to, to visit these different places. So I'll post that in the, in the chat box also. Thank you so much for the interesting presentation. I know Eric has a few notes to wrap us up with today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, we really appreciated that. So our last presentation for today and tomorrow, we will begin, uh, we aim to begin at 2 p.m. or 1400 hours London time. We are going to try and reschedule our two speakers who missed their conference today. If we do not schedule them before the start of tomorrow's sessions, then we will try to get them to record it with us and include it in the conference archives. So um, that should do it for today. Matthew, anything else that you need to? I do not. So I look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. Again, these sessions will be recorded if you missed one or you want to review one. So, And also for any speakers who are presenting tomorrow, please use the admin links that were sent to you today instead of the attendee links. Just use those for when you're attending a session. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.